Hello, hello, hello. Um, how are we all doing? So yes, I'm carrying on today with the minerals theme. So we've talked about calcium and magnesium and how they kind of work together. And today I'm going to bring you a little bit more information about sodium. Now sodium is really important. Like So today here where I am, it's 30, 30 degrees in temperature. So when we sweat out a load of sodium, um, that can encourage our bodies to then retain more sodium so that we actually end up with lots of swelling and water retention. So this is why it's really important that um, you drink lots of fluids and you keep hydrated in, um, in this weather. So what is sodium? Now we think of sodium as being like table salt. Now that's sodium chloride, but actually sodium is a, a mineral it's an essential mineral and it's something that we need in order for our cells to function. So it's actually what we call the great solvent in the body. And um, what it does is it actually keeps things in solution. So it dissolves things. So it keeps them in like a fluid form, which is how we, we need things to be in order to transport them. Um, so in order to transport the ions in our electron transport chain, in order to create energy, in order for our cells to function, in order for us to do the things that, that we need to do. Um, so it's what we call our primary alkalizer as well. So if our bodies are overly acidic, now I don't want to get into the acidic alkaline kind of debate because our bodies are naturally acidic. There's areas of the, the, uh, the body, like the stomach, for instance, that has hydrochloric acid in there. So we do need a, a balance but what it does is it actually buffers so it creates a, a buffer so that we don't become overly acidic and um because when we get overly acidic our cells stop functioning so if you imagine pouring acid on something or something um i don't know whether you think back to science at school and we always had to dilute things um but if you poured acid on something or something was highly acidic it kind of stops working so we need that, that buffer, that alkalizing um, function. It helps to regulate our blood pressure and our heart rate as well. Um, so that goes back to the, the fluid balance and it's a huge influence on our kidneys as well. Um, it maintains our fluid balance, as I said, and maintains the pH by being a buffer. And it's regulated by aldosterone and that's a, a hormone that's produced in the kidneys. So it's really important for our salt balance, our fluid balance, our electrolyte balance, that we have adequate amounts of sodium. Um, it also influences stomach acid. So if you're one of those people that experiences uh, like gastric reflux or um, being unable to digest proteins very well, so you're feeling full and um, not so good after eating like a, a meat or a heavy protein meal, it could be that you're low in hydrochloric acid. Now, most people that take PPIs, so... Um, things like lansoprazole or Tums, things like that, to reduce stomach acid, actually already have low stomach acid. Um, so it's a bit of a, um, a swizz really, that they're then lo trying to lower that stomach acid again. So it's affecting your digestion again. So for people like, um, like that, make sure you chew your food um, because digestion starts in the mouth, not in the gut. So making sure you chew your food and um, that's the, the best thing to, to start off with. Um, if you have high sodium levels, now it's not as common, but it just means that your adrenal gland function and your aldosterone production is really increased. So this is what we have in really stressful situations. So we're in that fight or flight mode. We'll be producing a lot more sodium because our bodies need it um, in order to create the, the hormones or release the hormones like cortisol and adrenaline and get ourselves ready, get our, our muscles ready for that contraction and to get ourselves out of there or to fight ourselves out of a situation. Um, so when we're really stressed out, um, our, our levels of sodium will increase. But this stress can be from anything. So I've said it before, stress is stress is stress is stress is stress. It doesn't matter where it comes from. So it can be an internal stress. So if you are uh, under the weather or your, your immune system is suffering or you've got things going on, it doesn't necessarily need to be an external stressor. So someone that's annoyed you or, you know, road rage or in Tesco's or, or whatever. Um, and like, as I said, if you've got a decrease in stomach acid, it means that you've got a decrease in sodium as well. So deficiencies are definitely more common than having uh, an excess. 
And so here's some of the symptoms that you might experience if you have a sodium deficiency or low sodium level. So allergies and apathetic attitudes. So a bit meh about everything. Um, anorexia. So this has been linked to low sodium levels in the cells. Abdominal bloating, um, low mood, dizziness, fatigue, high blood pressure, reduced stomach acid. Um, poor protein digestion because of that and weakness and you'll also be known as what we call a slow oxidizer so 90% of the population are slow oxidizers it just means that your metabolic rate um, is more suited to a, a slow metabolism. Um, you're also probably going to have a poor exercise tolerance so whenever you do something you get really out of breath you get really fatigued it takes you a little bit longer to recover from things and you'll, you'll be tired afterwards. Um, if you have an excess, so this is often driven by inflammation. So uh, you've probably heard me talk a lot about stress and inflammation in the past. But if you have a lot of inflammation, you'll have edema, so water retention, headaches maybe, um, irritability, a bit nervous, a bit anxious. And you're also likely to have low calcium and magnesium levels and an increased stress response. So this is like when your fight or flight mode kicks in or if you have been in this pattern for a long time and your adrenals are just before they become fatigued, they're in overdrive, you'll have really high sodium levels. Um, you'll probably also notice that you have dry lips, dry mouth, your skin may be a little bit dry as well, uh, maybe some issues with the nails and so on. So sodium is actually what we call um, an antagonist and a synergist. Now I've mentioned this before, but an antagonist is something that competes or prevents and a synergist is something that supports or helps. So the antagonists are potassium, magnesium and calcium. So we're going to come on to potassium tomorrow. So sodium and potassium regulate one another. But as I've said, if you have high sodium, you're going to have low calcium and magnesium. And if you have high magnesium and calcium, you'll have low sodium. So they influence one another and it's all to do with the way the cell functions and your intra and extracellular ionic balances. And it's synergists, so it's helpers and supporters are potassium, manganese, chromium, vitamin C, vitamin E and B complex of vitamins. Um, for this, I do not recommend sodium supplements. Don't get table salt. You don't need anything that's overly salty. Most of our salt, um, food that's processed is it has by far too much salt in it. So that's sodium chloride, not necessarily sodium. Um, and the sodium chloride is the kind of chemicalized manufactured uh, not, not necessarily natural form of this so um, what we need is Celtic sea salt now there's loads of different types we're really lucky in the UK that we're an island so there's loads uh, off the south coast um, there's loads um, from over from Ireland and up north um, there's a particular type I think it's called Redmond's which is highly recommended um, I have a couple of different types of Celtic salt. I don't recommend the, the pink stuff because often that's um, chemically enhanced with um, dyes and so on. And you only need about half a teaspoon a day. And if you think you spread that out throughout the whole day, then that's all you need. And you, the likelihood is you're probably getting a lot of that in your diet anyway. But if you have noticed that you have some of those um, symptoms, then maybe you could add a little bit to um, one of your meals and see how you go with that. So again, if you found this helpful, I'd really appreciate some hearts and likes in the bottom. And if you have any questions or you'd like to know anything more, then please drop me some comments. So thanks again for watching and I will see you soon.